Blue Dinks, fun songs for kids. Hey everyone, this is Ashley from Twinkly Dinks, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a fingerling carrying case. You'll need a fingerling to measure with, some fabric, some buttons, embroidery thread, and needles, and those are ribbon and cruel needles. So first you're going to want to unfold your fabric, and we just used a fat quarter for this, and I only ended up using less than half of it, so you can make more than one out of it. So first you'll need to cut one piece that is an inch out from each edge of the fingerling. Then you'll need to cut one that is the same width as that one, but a little bit longer. So the one I did was about four inches longer and it worked out perfectly for two folds. And there's the two pieces. Now we're gonna use the embroidery thread to make a running stitch on the edge of the shorter piece of fabric. And you can see that I only folded it over once for this hem, but I actually recommend folding it over twice to have a cleaner edge there. So for the running stitch, you just take the needle and you put it through the fabric after knotting it, and then you go over about a quarter of an inch and come through the fabric again. And you just keep doing this so each side of the fabric will have that nice trim that just looks like something was hand stitched and that's the look I was going for for the edge of this so it would be fun and playful. So you can see here I'm putting it in for the what will be the second stitch. So there you can see what one stitch creates. It should go back to the front here. Yep, so this is a stitch that you can use to create drawstrings. Um, and there is what that final edge looks like. And it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. If you want it to be perfectly straight, you can use fabric chalk or marker to draw a line. Um, I really just wanted this to be a fun, playful look. So this is how I knot off the end. You just stick the needle through the last stitch that way. And then it creates kind of a loop. And then you just pull the needle through that loop. And the first one doesn't quite create a knot, but if you do that same exact thing twice, it'll create a really sturdy knot that shouldn't come out very easily. So here it is going through the second time. And then just go ahead and cut off that excess embroidery thread. So now we have the piece where we finished off the edge and then the piece to the right is the bigger piece. So these two together are going to create the pouch. I had created a running stitch on this bigger piece as well before realizing that it would look much better having it folded over. So go ahead and skip that for now and we'll go back to it later in the video. But now we're going to line up the two pieces, right sides facing together, and we're going to stitch with a back stitch along the side, the bottom edge, and the other side. And the back stitch looks like this, and it's a very strong stitch. So um, it makes it so it won't come unraveled very easily, and it won't have that drawstring effect like the running stitch would. The running stitch is a lot faster stitch, but it doesn't create as much strength. And since I have little girls that are gonna be um, putting fingerlings in and out of this pouch constantly, I wanted something really strong. So this uses up a lot of embroidery thread, so I probably had about a yard's worth, but it worked out great. And you can see here, so what you do is you do like the running stitch, but instead of going forward, you go back to the edge of that last stitch, and it creates this nice thick stitch on the back, and, um, for the corner, it's pretty easy to just work it in there the same way. So uh, then we just have to stitch up that side and then here it is. And it creates a nice strong pouch. And if you want to, you can trim off that excess fabric, just don't get too close to the thread. So that's how little embroidery thread I had left over after having a yard's worth to begin with. So this stitch definitely uses a lot, but it's worth it. And then um, you can see how strong it creates it. So this is where I decided that it would be much better to fold these edges of the pouch in 
uh, twice because you can see on that one that I had done the running stitch on it just was rough looking so all you have to do is fold it over and then fold it over again if you want it to be really precise you can use an iron um, I was showing how to do it here with one hand so that's why it's a little wonky yeah so those three sides will be stitched with the running stitch and then when it folds over it'll create a pouch like that so there they are stitched and then if you have any excess threads like right here you're just going to want to uh, snip those off now and that only takes a second and just little details like that make things look a lot more professional so we only need one button for this project unless you want to add more embellishments and I found this pack at Walmart for like 288 and I thought it matched the fabric perfectly so we can use it for any other projects with this fabric and they were really cute. So I just grabbed one of the bigger sized buttons out and then folded the pouch where I wanted it, lined the button up and then you're just going to take embroidery thread and come in from the back side and with it knotted so you're just going to come through one of those holes and then go over it um, into the next hole and you can do that one time held it down really well two times made it feel really really strong so I ended up just kind of going around it um, two times and you can see like that button's not going to go anywhere it's going to withstand um, being unlatched and latched all day long and what's nice about doing this by hand is that it's so easy to repair so I just did the knot the exact same way that I did it when I was stitching that just has always worked out to be the easiest way to knot it for me and then so you're gonna fold it over and we're just measuring how much thread we're gonna need to latch it on right there so you're gonna want to make sure that it fits kind of snugly but there's enough for it to have give so that way it's not putting a lot of strain on the fabric so this right here would be way too tight there wouldn't be oh there we go and then we pulled it a little bit looser so what I'm talking about right now is actually pretty perfect so you just knot the um, thread pull it through and then figure out the loop you want and then knot it on the back side and then this it's a lot easier to do with two hands this is a little hard to do with one hand but you just slip it on there and then it creates your pouch. And it's really easy to take on and off. So here it is with a fingerling inside. And since we use the fingerling to measure with, it fits in there perfectly. So this can be done with any small toy and it can be done in any fabric combination and any color of thread. So if you decide to make this project, share below what toy you made it for. And if you made any modifications, you could add embellishments to it or crochet or braid some yarn and make a handle for it. Um, this is a very flexible project, so I hope you enjoyed. Hit the big red button below to subscribe.